Hello and welcome to this exclusive interview on France 24 here in Najaf, Iraq. Our guest today is Moktada Al-Sadr, the Iraqi Shia leader. Hello, sir. Hello. Thank you for agreeing to give this interview. First of all, the situation in Iraq. Where are we headed in Iraq? This is a key question. What are the developments on the ground in Iraq with the Islamic State organization that's knocking on the doors of Baghdad? In actual fact, in Iraq, the security situation has worsened, and the war underway in Iraq it means that there will be a further worsening of the security situation in Iraq. And Iraq, the verge of experiencing an even bloodier war, the country is going to go through a very dark period in history because of a very significant factor with the worsening of the community, the sectarian situation. We are unable to find a solution to the situation. This war, lead, this war will lead to thousands of victims on all sides. Now, several statements have been made by the Americans. President Obama announced that he would soon be setting up a military base in al province, that he'd be sending 450 U.S. advisors to train the Iraqi military, whilst uh, knowing that there are already 3,000 U.S. advisors on the ground. Now, are all these measures useful? We have several comments regarding these measures. First of all, if the American army comes back to Iraq, we will consider it as an occupying force, and the army will be a target exactly in the same way as the Islamic State organization. It's your experience in 2004, right? As in 2004, we will consider the Americans to be an occupying force, and we will fight them, and we have more experience on the ground since then. The Americans will discover even more of what they've already been through. If I may, I'd just like to remind viewers that in 2004, you had the Mahdi army. Now, this army has been disbanded, frozen. Do you plan to revive this army? Uh, the most important thing is to revive Iraqi resistance all groups of the resistance. The Iraqi resistance will fight against the American occupation in Iraq, whether through the Mahdi army or the peace brigades. We have the peace brigades who, specific, who have a specific job, which is to uh, liberate um, specific areas. The, we reject the presence of the American army. And even the bombings by the U.S. forces, we reject them. We view this as an act of occupation. But I would like to convey a message to the Americans. The American intervention displays that the United States can no longer claim to be a superpower. The Islamic State group only has 5,000 members, according to estimates, and the world's biggest superpower has not been able to defeat this terrorist group in Syria, Iraq, other regions. So the United States can no longer claim that they are a superpower. Well, that's the question. What is the objective of the Americans? Some say that the U.S. support the Islamic State organization. Others say that the Americans are dropping uh, weapons. Now, there are many assumptions doing the round about this. What, in your view, is the goal? Why uh, don't the U.S. want to get rid of this organization? The Americans always do the same thing. First of all, they create discord somewhere, and then they stoke the fire. They exac exacerbate tensions with weapons by uh, fostering uh, sectarianism, exacerbating the tensions, and the Americans let the protagonists kill each other, 
and they observe the situation and they enjoy the sight of the bloodshed. Now, there are both uh, interventions from Iran and Saudi Arabia. Your enemies always uh, mention the Iranian intervention. They mention the presence of Iranian fighters in Iraq. How can one refer to the influence of Iran versus Saudi Arabia, Iranian influence versus the Saudi influence? First of all, I have to say that there are no Iranian fighters on the ground. I solemnly swear this. Much has been said about the role of General Soleimani. Indeed, General Soleimani has responsibilities. That's the first point. But secondly, we should not just refer to Iranians. There are other interventions. You're referring to the parallel role of the Saudis. The Sunni countries are supporting the Sunnis in Iraq, and sometimes with the support of the Islamic State group, and the Shia countries are supporting the Shia Muslims. But there is a, th a third party, the Americans, and the, the uh, biggest part of the blame lies with them. We should not simply target Iran. Of course, in Iran is intervening, but sometimes it also has a positive influence. And we have the Saudi intervention, which can be positive or negative. But these are all neighboring countries. What's going on in Iraq affects them. But the Americans are the biggest culprits, and the biggest part of the blame should be directed at them. Well, precisely, let's talk about the role of the Al-Quds Brigade and the role of Qasem Soleimani. You mentioned that they supervise things. According to a Saudi leader, it's Iranian interference. He even refers to an Iranian war in Iraq. The situation in Iraq is open to everybody. All the neighboring countries involved, the Americans in intervening, even Israel, other countries, Iraq is now open to everybody. And it's no longer possible to prevent anybody from stepping in. However, on your channel, I'd like to say the following. Iraq must recover its sovereignty. It must be able to take its own decisions for its internal affairs. Um, and in, for counterterrorism, we do have however, need help. And the Iranian role is part of that? Not necessarily the Iranians, but the main point is that it should not be an occupying force. And we do not want the intervention to be driven by a specific community. Do you have in mind a country that could assume this role? No, I don't have any specific country in mind. It's very difficult. Furthermore, your uh, critics uh, blame you for being against arming the Kurds and the Sunnis by the Americans. You refuse to uh, arm both the Sunnis and the Kurds. And to arm the Shias as well. And the Shia. I'm rejecting arming from all sides. Who's arming the Shia then? Non-occupying forces are arming them. The European Union, the United, the United Nations. Why was Iran? Your critics blame you for wanting to keep the weapons within the Shia forces exclusively. No, the weapons have to be with the government forces. Well, that's what your critics claim. No, not with the Shia Muslims. The weapons have to be controlled by the government forces or those who support the government forces. Let's turn now to the situation in Yemen, the Saudi intervention, the raids uh, by the Saudis and the Arab coalition. How do you view the situation in Yemen? Yemen, and how do you view the Saudi intervention? I have several comments regarding what's going on in the region, in Syria, Yemen, Libya, in the Arab Spring countries. All these countries are uh, going through the same film. With the same director? Yes, with the same film director. Furthermore, the war between Saudi Arabia and Yemen is an unfair war, and I have to be very frank here. All this bloodshed, daily bloodshed, 
because of Abdarabu is unacceptable. We cannot accept this in logical terms, in terms of legitimacy on the international level, that one, hundreds of people should die because of one person. This is not acceptable. He has to go home. I'm not targeting anybody in particular. I'm referring to the whole of the Yemenite people, uh, the Houthis, the president. These are all uh, Yemenites. Yeah, but some say that he's the legitimate president. There was a coup by the Houthis against the legitimate president. No, we should not apply the double standards here. In that case, perhaps Assad is uh, legitimate. No, we cannot say that he's legitimate or, or, or not. Either they're all legitimate or then none of them is le legitimate. You have to apply the same principles to all countries. And I blame the Yemenite pa patriots who, uh, are, who allow uh, external players to bomb the country. Nobody should be intervening. The, whether the situation is a military solution or not, the solution has to be a 100% Yemenite situation. So you believe in a peaceful solution. Do you have any ideas how a solution could come about? Yes, I believe that there can be a peaceful solution after the withdrawal of the Saudi Arabians and the end of the war. Well, that's not the situation at the present time. The Saudi but nobody's putting pressure on Saudi Arabia. You mentioned the key role played by Saudi Arabia. You referred to a positive role played by the Saudis to reduce tensions in the region, not just in Iraq, but also in Yemen. How do you view this Saudi role? The Saudi intervention has exacerbated the situation in Yemen, in particular in terms of the communities and on a sectarian basis. If Saudi Arabia were to stop the war in the country, this would calm everybody down. Therefore, Saudi Arabia can play an important role by stopping the war in uh, Yemen and indeed in Bahrain and by engaging in dialogue that brings all the players together. And I always call for dialogue between Iran and Saudi Arabia and indeed with Turkey in order to bring an end to this crisis. The dialogue between Iran and Saudi Arabia can play a major role to resolve the country, or at least to uh, limit the effects of the crisis. Mr. Sadra, I'd now like to discuss the situation in Syria. Recently, the opposition forces gained ground. The regime has lost uh, units and brigades. Uh, the Assad regime is in a very difficult situation. Do you believe that Assad is about to fall? I see the fall of all the players, be it al-Assad or the other parties, even the opposition forces which are killing each other, I see them being defeated. And whereas I had uh, sympathy before for those opposition forces, what is going on now, what all these parties are doing is, the, is that they are destroying Syria. Had it been a genuine Arab Spring, then we would not be in the present situation. They would not have uh, intervened in internal affairs. Had it been an Arab Spring, we would not have seen this. We saw the Arab Spring in Egypt, for example, which to some extent has been successful. If this revolution had been a genuine spring, then there would not have been a war. But some say that it was indeed an Arab Spring, but that spring was repressed by the regime. At the beginning. At the beginning. But we saw repression in other countries, in Bahrain, for example. But this did not lead the opposition forces to fight each other, nor in Yemen. When they tried to bring the regime down in those countries, the opposition forces did not fight amongst themselves. But what has happened is that the Americans intervened, supplied weapons, and this provoked the situation. And the 
goal is not to bring about the downfall of the Assad re re regime. What we're having is the destruction of Syria. So for you, it's not an Arab Spring problem, but you're really criticizing the sectarian nature of these revolutions in Syria. In particular in Syria. In Egypt, we did not see any denominational um, uh, struggle. The situation is acceptable, for example, in Tunisia and even in uh, Libya, notwithstanding the intervention of uh, foreign uh, forces. This has destabilized the country and after the um, assassination of the American consul. But in Syria, the situation is a purely denominational conflict between the Sunnis, the Shia and the Alawites. Others refer to the fact that uh, the region is to be uh, redrawn through a new Sykes-Picot agreement with the emergence of a new entity, an entity religious based like Israel in the past. Many, both inside and outside of Iraq, want there to be the status quo. These wars that are happening in the country's regions, if these wars were to end, then the influence, these actions would cease. They want Iraq to remain as it is, because this situation provides them with some degree of uh, security. So that would be the whole region with a new map being redrawn for the region in the future? I don't think that we can redefine the region, especially since the Islamic State organization does not just want one or two regions. This is a cross-border conflict, and this may have repercussions across the whole region. This reshaping of the region is possible, but it's not feasible at present. Could you discuss the role played by your forces that are fighting on the ground, supporting the people's forces within the Peace Brigade in order to fight against the Islamic State group. Are you fighting on the side of the people's forces? What are the areas of agreement and disagreement with this uh, people's force? I called these forces the peace brigades in order to make them independent to some degree and so that everybody should uh, contribute to improve, improving the security situation and fighting the Islamic State group. But in everything I do, be it in the political, social or military area, what I try to do is to remain independent. I seek not to follow a particular trend or to go against a particular uh, faction or trend in order for the Iraqi people to benefit. I remain independent and nobody meddles in my affairs and I don't meddle in anybody else's affairs. There are some points of agreement with the popular um, forces, in particular the Iraqi security forces, and there are some uh, major disagreements. These areas of disagreement? There are two points in particular. First of all, these popular forces should not intervene in politics. It should remain a, um, a military force and its reputation should not be tarnished by meddling in politics. Second, the uh, popular forces should not behave with Daesh as the Islamic State group behaves with others. Now, aren't these forces uh, worsening the sectarian situation in Iraq? This is quite true. It's worsening the situation, and the present situation is the result of other factors that exacerbated the situation before, the f policies of the previous government and what happened in al Anbar. Demonstrations took place there, and at the time I spoke with al-Maliki. I suggested that we go uh, on the ground, that we respond to some of the uh, demands of the demonstrators, which were reasonable which did not go beyond any green or red line, but he completely rejected the proposal and things worsened thereafter. But I still say that Iraq should belong to all and that nobody should be excluded. It needs to be said, too, that there are Sunni tribes who were fighting at your side uh, at the front, and this 
of course, uh, reduces uh, sectarian tensions. But there are Sunni Muslims who are afraid of this Islamic State group and have stated that uh, Daesh is, a, um, is the, the Islamic group. Three quarters of the Sunni Muslims are afraid of the Islamic State group, and they were between the devil and the deep blue sea, the devil of the previous government, which was an extremist government, very clumsy, and the deep blue sea, as it were, of the interventions of the Islamic State group. And finally, they submitted to the Islamic State group. This is really a key point. Where have the Sunni moderates uh, gone to? Where in a situation caught between the rock of the Shia extremists and the hard place of the Sunni extremists. On your channel, I call on the moderate Sunnis to intervene to support the government, the popular forces, in order to fight against terrorism, to force them to go back, and in order to reclaim their rights. But if the situation remains as it is, if the Sunni maintain their current position, they won't gain anything. I advise them on your channel for them to be firm with the Islamic State group and to support moderate Shia Muslims. But in the meantime, until we reach that point, uh, sectarian uh, weapons are being heard. The weapons are being used, and it's a very sad situation. There's a major split, and as I say, uh, weapons are still being used. And I must say that this uh, conflict with Shia and Sunnis and its impact on all the other Iraqi uh, components Let's uh, turn to the others, the Christians who had to leave their country. The Islamic State group is not only targeting the Shias, it's targeting all minorities. Christians have left Mosul. Christians have indeed left Mosul, and I would like to say that they'll soon be able to go home, but I don't think that the present situation will allow that. And what could reduce the tension, and I would like to take this opportunity